Hello folks, in this video I'm going to continue working on this tic-tac-toe project and start actually working on the JavaScript part of it. So first of all, before I can do that, I need to make sure that I'm calling it into my HTML document. So just at the bottom of the body tag, just before I close it out here, I need to add a new tag called script and need to add in a location for the file. So source is equal to the name and location. Now in my case, the script file is in the same folder as the HTML document. So I can just say script.js and now it's going to call through anything from here to my HTML. So what do I actually want to do here? Well, first of all, I want to look at each of these individual cells one by one and see if they've been clicked on. That's the first thing I'll do before I then look at whether I can add a knot, a circle or a cross to it. So let's add a little comment to the beginning here. And I will say, pull in cells from DOM. And I'm going to give this a variable name. So it's going to be const cell elements. That's going to be the name of my variable. Document dot query selector all. And what is it that I want to select? Well, it's going to be anything that's got the class of cell. So just like CSS, when you want to target a class, you would start with a full stop and you say cell. So that's going to pull them all through. And what I could actually do here is say console.log cell elements. So let's see what that looks like. If I save this and I inspect, go to the console, you can see that it's pulled through a node list. So all of these individual cells and the divs have been pulled through into the script. So I know that that's working correctly. Now I can start actually going through each one of them and looking at whether they've been clicked on. So to do that, I just want to iterate through each of the individual cells within that element. Let's add another comment to say add event listener and then we can start iterating through them. So I say cell elements dot for each. So essentially iterate through each one of them. And as I do it, the variable is going to be called my cell. So within each of those cells, I want to add on an event listener. So we'll say cell dot add event listener. And the event that I want to look for is a click event. So there's different types, but I just want to know whether the mouse is being clicked on a cell. And if it has, then what do we do? Well, at this point, I just want to put some output onto the console. So I'll say console.log click. Okay, let's now try this again. So now it's not console logging the actual cell elements anymore, but if I click on one of these, it says click. So it's detecting the fact that I'm actually clicking on these it's not dropping down anymore, but you can see the number increasing down here because it's just the same output that it's logging. So that's fine in terms of telling me that I've actually clicked on a cell, but it doesn't tell me which one has been clicked. So that's the information that I need to extract from this next. So what I'm going to do is go up to this variable here and add an extra bracket and add a second variable called index. Then I close that bracket here. And now rather than console logging the word click, I'm actually going to console log that variable itself. Let's just make sure that I've added semicolons at the end here. Save that again. And now this time, as I click, you can see it gives me a number. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So remember, this is always going to start with 0, which means that it's actually been able to detect which cell that I'm in. So this is cell number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So using this information, I'm now able to tell where it is that I've clicked. And from that, I can put either a, a cross or a circle within the corresponding cell. But that means that I need a way of being able to track the cells within the JavaScript document. So I know that I've got all these individual cells here, and this tells me whether there's a circle or a cross inside it. But what I actually want to do is have all that data within the JavaScript itself. So right at the top of the document, I'm going to make some space and I'll add a new comment to say, create array to hold board data. So actually, all the stuff that you're going to see, this is just the visual part of it the actual board information of where each of the circles and crosses is, that's going to be stored and kept within an array in the JavaScript part of it. So let's just create this array now. So we'll say let board data equal an array. And what's this array going to have? Well, it will have an array of individual arrays. So it's going to be a collection of each of these individual rows. So just to make it a little bit cleaner, I'm going to break this up over a few lines. So within the, the array, I will have three smaller arrays. Now each one is going to have a bunch of zeros in it. So we'll say zero, 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 then add another array underneath, which is zero, 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 and then add a comma, and the last array, zero, zero, zero. So now you can hopefully see what this corresponds to. 
Essentially, it's just saying that each of these values is corresponding to each of these cell grids here. So right now, based on the JavaScript document, I should have nothing in any of those cells. So now when I click on one of these cells, rather than just telling me which number of cell I've clicked on, what I actually want to do is modify the data within this table here to correspond to either a circle or a cross that's been put in there. So for that, I'm going to change this to call a function instead. So let's change that to say place marker. And for now, I'm going to leave it like that. I'll start building up the function and I'll come back and add more variables. So I'll add a little comment here to say create function for placing markers. So it's going to be function place marker. And actually what I'll do for now is I'll put that variable back in here. So the index variable that I was output into the console a minute ago, I'm going to pass it in between the two functions. And instead, I'm going to console log it here just to make sure that it's still working correctly. So let's save that, try it again. And it's still pulling through. So now I know that it's taking that index number and it's passing it through into this function here. So what I need to do now is work out where within this grid I've actually clicked because all I'm getting is an individual number, but say I've got a number of eight. Well, how do I correspond that to this list, which has got three rows and three columns in it? What does eight mean in this context? Well, for that, I need to work out the column and the row that I'm in. So let's add another comment here and we'll say determine row and column from the index. So first of all, I'll work out a column. I'll say let call equal the index and I'll use this percentage sign here, which is essentially going to give me the remainder and we'll console log it to see what's going on. So console log the column. So now when I click, it's saying zero as it was before, one, two, but if I go to the next one, it repeats. So it says zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So what it's actually telling me is which column I'm in vertically. So I'm in the zeroth column, the first column, and then the second column. So that's giving me the columns correctly. Now I can do the same thing with rows. I can say let row equal index minus column divided by three. So let's console log the row now. So now row zero, row one, row two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two. So now it's actually picking up the column and the row correctly, which means that I can correlate them to the position within this grid here. So instead of logging out the row, let's actually take that board data. Let's output that and see how that looks. So when I click, well, it's not being modified at this point. So if I open it out, it's just giving me that same array, which is going to be all zeros in each of these cells. But what I can do instead is modify it using this information. So we'll say board data, square brackets, row, square brackets, column is equal to, let's just say number one. Save that again. And now when we output it, and open this out, you can see now there's a one in this one, which I just clicked on. So if I click on the middle one now, open it again, there's now a one in the middle. If I click in the bottom left, there's now a one in the bottom left. So what's happening here is it's taking the index value from my individual cells. It's working out the column and the row number that I'm in. And then it's going into this board data here, this list, using these as the index values for them. And then it's setting that value to one. Now, of course, I don't actually want it to be set to one every time because that's not going to mean anything. It means that as I keep clicking on this, it's just going to fill it up with ones eventually, which doesn't really tie into anything. What I actually want to put in there is the player number. So what I'm going to do is create a new variable right at the top here. So let's go down below that table add a little section, which will say define game variables. And I'll say let player equal one. So this player variable is going to be equal to one just means that player one is the one that starts. So now when I click, rather than setting this to one automatically, I'm actually going to set it to the player variable. So that means that as soon as I click, it's going to change to a one, just as it was doing before. But instead, the difference is going to be that now, as soon as I've clicked, I'm going to change the player variable. So it's going to go from player one to the other player. Now you would think here that I should just set it to player two, but what I'm actually going to do instead is set it to player minus one. So I'm always going to 
display on the screen that is player one and player two, but in the background, it's actually going to be player one and player minus one. This might not make much sense at the moment, but when I come to a little bit further down the line, when I look at win conditions, so which one of the players has won, it'll make a lot more sense at that stage. So let's just add a little comment here to say change player. And we'll say, well, if the player is one, it becomes minus one. And if the player is minus one, it becomes one. So all I'm doing here is just multiplying it by negative one and flipping the player over to the other one. So let's test this out again. So we'll output, oh, I need to add that console log back in. So we'll say console log board data. And as I click, open this out. So player one is clicked in the top left. And now in the middle is player player two, but it records it as a minus one. Okay, so bottom left is a one. So now it's working correctly, but there is one little bug here. So the next player is going to, now it's switched, so it should be a minus one. What if I click in a space that's already taken? What if I click on the top left again? It was one, well now it becomes minus one. So what that means is that I'm able to replay onto an existing cell. I don't want to be able to do that. I want to check, first of all, whether that cell is free before a player can click onto it. So within this section here, before I automatically go and put that player number into my board data, I'm actually gonna add a little check. So we'll add a comment to say, check if the current, the current cell is empty. And we do that by just saying if, well, I can just copy this up. So if that information here, if board data at row and column, if that is equal to zero, only then do we go and actually do all this stuff here. So only then do I assign that position to the player number and change the player. Otherwise, we just keep going. So now if I click in the top left, I put it to a one. If I click again, nothing happens. You notice nothing's happening now. This isn't updating and it's not giving me anything else because it already knows that there is a one in here. So I can't place another marker on there. It doesn't matter which player it is. They can't put another marker in that same place. So now I can click with player two, I can click on one of the other cells and now it is working. So I've got one and a minus one here. So now you can see this is all working pretty much as it should be. I've got the basic grid working and I can click on it and modify the individual cells. What of course is missing is the correlation or the tie between what you can see on the grid and what's actually going on in the list in the background in these arrays. So what I want to do next is take this information here and draw it correctly onto the grid so that when I click, it gives me either a circle or a cross. So I'm going to do that in the next video. For now, if you found this useful, then please leave a like and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.